Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds. This is the second December since the Fukushima Daiichi accident. Tokyo Electric released a report in September of this year, and they gave it to the IAEA, the International Atomic Energy Agency. The report is a more thorough analysis of the explosions at Fukushima Daiichi, and it discusses things that they've learned in 2012 that they didn't incorporate in their analysis back in 2011. Now, I've stated that the explosion was due to a um, prompt criticality, moderated but prompt criticality in the fuel pool that created the upward force. They state that it was caused by hydrogen in the basement. I submit to you that that's a secondary problem. What's really important is the word at the bottom of slide number 19 by Tokyo Electric. Tokyo Electric acknowledges that this was a detonation. Now, if you recall, a detonation is a shockwave that travels faster than the speed of sound. And no one is designing containments to withstand a detonation shockwave. So I'm pleased, actually, that Tokyo Electric has finally agreed with me that this was a detonation shockwave and not a deflagration like in Unit 1. So I think the first important thing for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to admit is that containments leak. But the second thing is that they can explode with a detonation shockwave. Now, since Fukushima Daiichi, I've been following the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's analysis uh, pretty closely, and no one is talking about the effects of a detonation shockwave on a nuclear reactor containment. This has major ramifications for all containment designs. And like an ostrich in the sand, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is simply ignoring the fact that Fukushima Daiichi Unit 3 had a detonation shockwave hit it. This Tokyo Electric slideshow shows a couple things about containment integrity. First, it's clear evidence that containments leak. It would be nice if the Nuclear Regulatory Commission acknowledged that containments can leak when they factor in their, their exclusion distances and evacuation of, of populations. But the second thing is the fact that a nuclear containment can be destroyed by a detonation shockwave. We talked about in a previous podcast that Unit 3 is so damaged now as a result of the explosion that it can no longer handle the crane used to lift the nuclear fuel out of the fuel pool. That damage was caused not by a deflagration, but by a detonation. And yet, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission pretends that that can't happen here. Well, it did happen. And if it did happen, that means it can happen again. So our containment analysis needs to reflect the fact that a shockwave traveling faster than the speed of sound can occur as the result of a hydrogen explosion. Now, this is not just a problem with the old Mark I designs. The AP-1000, brand new designs being built in, in Georgia, are a tenth of a pound from the design limit of the containment, and they don't assume a detonation shockwave. When a containment is so close to the design limit, if it did have a detonation shockwave like we know can occur, it would shatter the containment. This is a lesson the nuclear industry needs to learn and needs to analyze for and strengthen its operating containments moving forward.